few more things about the uh, hematopoietic syndrome. Well, by the way, your textbook, I, I think, you know, another name that is given to hematopoietic syndrome is the uh, hematologic syndrome. It all has to do with blood, okay? The old term is hematopoietic. That's the term that I learned, and because I'm biased, and that's the term I'm teaching. Okay. Uh, but one thing that I that I didn't mention is when a person gets affected by a dose like this, you don't treat the symptom. You treat uh, you you don't treat the whole syndrome because there's no way of treating it. You just remember a syndrome is uh, is a manifestation of many symptoms, and so what you what you treat are the symptoms. So if a patient has vomiting, well, you, you treat the vomiting. If the patient has uh, diarrhea, you treat the diarrhea. So you treat the symptoms. Okay, but there's really no no way of treating the whole whole thing. I mean, antibiotics are just is part of the treatment. Uh, like I said, depending on the dose, you might need to isolate the patient. Uh, you might need to sterilize food, water, etc. All right, uh, let's see, so let's go back here. So uh, the symptoms are the most commonly that, the most commonly observed after exposure are the following, okay? It, it doesn't mean that other patients cannot present other symptoms. It is possible they might not present them all. It's possible too. But the most common, that's what I said here, the most common observed uh, symptoms of someone who's going into the hematopoietic syndrome are Malice, okay, and fatigue. Malice is, I explained it last time, it just means that you feel, you don't feel well, okay? You feel, you feel bad. That's what that expression means. You feel bad. Uh, you feel tired, you feel fatigued, okay? Uh, epilation, okay, loss of hair. After the first or second week post exposure. Okay. Uh, vomiting is common too, it's common too. Uh, you know, you're lethargic, the person is lethargic, okay, meaning that is the person is going to be really slow, the person is going to be tired, sleepy, okay, which is all part of the uh, malice and fatigue. Patients might develop fever, okay. Uh, now you're fighting infections because a lot of the uh, microorganisms that we have, they begin to take advantage of this. Like there is nothing holding them back, you know, stuff that you normally don't have a problem with digestive system, in your mouth, in your throat, everywhere, you know, uh, they begin to take advantage of them. And so the patient might develop a fever. Because of vomiting and because of uh, probably uh, uh, diarrhea, the patient might develop a hemorrhage, okay, or I mean a dehydration. And because if you have depleted uh, platelets, the patient might also suffer uh, hemorrhage. And these are not as common as what we're seeing here, but they could happen. Okay, another point to make clear here. Just because the patient survived here, let's say a dose of 300, 400, and, and, and the person survives this, that doesn't mean that you're not gonna see other effects, okay? Okay, because with a dose like that, most likely multiple chromosomes have been already been damaged as well. You're going to see that. Uh, so don't think, well, um, that person is out of the, is out of danger. The person is going to have a normal life. Probably not. Probably with time, we're going to see effects. With time, we're going to see something. If, you know, we don't know. But, uh, other damage has also been done. All right. Enough of that. Uh, Death may occur within a few months due to damage to the bone marrow or because of infection, okay? And the latent period, okay, what was the latent period? Well, I was when uh, nothing is that not, you yeah. see anything. Nothing is going on, okay? First you have, which is the uh, first stage that you see? It's a prodromal, remember? Okay, so the prodromal stage, and then you see the latent. Okay, and the latent nothing happens, the patients feel well, and then you get the manifest, okay? But during the, the podromal, the latent period, 
okay? I'm sorry, the latent period can last up, up to four weeks. So the patient feels fine, feels normal, okay? But then the manifest period comes in, okay? If it's not lethal, if the patient is going to recover, uh, that, you know, that recovery begins two to four weeks and it can last up to six months. Okay? It can take a long time for that recovery to take place, okay? As you can see here, and this is just looking at blood cells. Yeah. After about six months, then you begin to go up. Okay. You're not fully out of out of danger, but you're coming back up. Okay. All right. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, there you go. gastrointestinal syndrome. This is the next syndrome. So the first one was the hematopoietic syndrome affecting bone marrow. The next one is the gastrointestinal syndrome. Those that go into the gastrointestinal syndrome, they also, pay attention here, they also go through the hematopoietic syndrome in a very short time, but they go through the hematopoietic syndrome. And then if the dose is high enough, then you get into the gastrointestinal syndrome. Are you following me on this? Yeah. So those that go that, you know, for whatever reason, they get exposed to a dose of 10 gray or higher, they are gonna go into the gastrointestinal syndrome. At the same time that they are dealing with the gastrointestinal syndrome, they are also dealing with the hematopoietic syndrome. Okay? So it's like a, you get hit a couple of times. All right, so let's get that clear. So the syndrome occurs with a total body dose uh, greater than about 10 grades. So now this is this is a thousand rats. No person has ever survived. No human being has ever survived a dose of a thousand rats. It, it's just too much for the person to take. Okay? And what happens here is the intestinal epithelium, the intestinal lining, okay, small <coughs> bowel specifically, is destroyed. It's not depleted, it's destroyed. Okay. Uh, and so what you have is a nearly complete destruction of the bone marrow. So the bone marrow is completely wiped out. Okay. And uh, so as I told you before, it's important. All the effects of the hemoglobin syndrome are present. They might not last longer because the patient might not last longer. So, but you will see them. Okay. All right. The radiosensitive cells of the GI tract are the Crips glibercum cells. Okay, that's what they're called. Right? And these are the stem cells. Okay, and they give rise to uh, the fully mature cells. And so what you have is 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 uh, well, I have a picture that is coming up, and I'll, and I'll show it to you. You have the Crips cells and you have the cilia in your in your bowel, right? Okay, and these cells, okay. Okay, what they do is the bottom is where you find this, uh, the Crips lubricant cells. They are on the bottom and they give rise to new ones. And you get new ones. Like, it's almost like what this happens with the skin, that the upper layers of the skin, every day you, you're, you're changing your skin, right? Did you know that a lot of the dust in your room is actually your skin? Uh, and that's what it is. All right. So it's all that skin that is coming up. And the same thing happens with the lining of the bowels, okay? And you're replacing them every day, you replace the cells. And so what happens here with the GA syndrome, you destroy the stem cell. And so you have no new cells that do all the absorption of nutrients and water, et cetera. Uh, and so it's a, it's a bad deal. So when exposure occurs, uh, the less radiosensitive mature cells are able to continue functioning normally, okay, for a few days, okay. However, the stem cells are destroyed. There's nothing replacing the mature cells. Make sense? Okay, so the mature cells can stay because they can take more radiation, right? But then the stem cells, 
they are destroyed. And then when, when you have depleted the mature cells, nothing is there to take its place. It's almost what happens, it's relative to what happens to, to red blood cells. Mature red blood cells can stay in your system, but since you have destroyed this, the blood stem cells, there's nothing, you know, three months or so after the exposure, then you have no red blood cells. So the same thing happens here. Okay, you destroy the, the stem cells on the bottom, and then once the mature cells are gone, that's it. You have nothing else to replace it. The mature functioning cells cannot be replaced. And over time, the GI syndrome symptoms become apparent. And we're going to get into this in just a second. Yeah. I, I think um, I remember that's one of Bergani's uh, theories that stem cells are more radiosensitive than mature yeah. cells. They call them, yeah, yeah. immatures. Back then, you know about stem cells. They call them immature cells. Immature cells. All right, so this is what we have. So, as you can see on the bottom, this is a, a, a slide, a microscopic picture, a slide of uh, the lining of the intestines. And you can see on the bottom, you see intestinal crypts of uh, liver con cells, the stem cells on the bottom here, okay? And the, uh, the mature cells are here, the globid cells. You find them here, all the way up, and the villi all the way on the top, is the tail of the uh, cells. And when these mature cells, you have many here, it's just not one, I mean, it's many. When you destroy these cells, Okay, when the, radiate, when the radiation exposure happens, these cells will die off on the bottom. The top ones, the mature cells, they still survive. They still make it. The problem is when they, as I was telling you before, you shed them every day, lose them every day. It gets to a point where nothing is empty. Okay, you end up with, you can't replace them because the cells that do the replacement are not there anymore. Okay, so let's take a look. So the symptoms, most commonly observed very soon after exposure, all those of the hematopoietic uh, syndrome, all of them, all of them. In this case, there is no exception. They are, all of them, you're gonna see, okay. Severe nausea and vomiting, okay. Uh, explosive diarrhea, okay. So the patient cannot stop going you know, to the back, can't stop, okay. They have there's nothing holding water, and so dehydration become a, becomes a real problem because you're not reabsorbing water. You're losing water. You're not only vomiting, but you're, the person has uh, massive explosive diarrhea. Okay, the latent period. Take a look. Now we went from from what was it uh, with the hematopoietic syndrome? I told you four weeks. Four weeks. Okay. Now take a look. Now. The latent period is three to five days. So the time where you're feeling well is three to five, or the person is feeling three to five days, and then boom, okay, uh, the person will, will die. There's no way of coming back. Okay, death usually occurs within four to ten days, regardless of medical treatment, regardless of how, what they do, sterilize water. That's it. The stem, the stem cells of the. Uh, Deaths are not going to be replaced. Plus, you have the problems with with the uh, bone marrow. That's 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 it. That's the end of this person. All right. So let's move on to the next syndrome. Okay, because you can go higher. All right. Let's see. Revascular syndrome. Uh, so this has to do with nerve cells, brain and also with your vascularity, it has to do with arteries and veins, okay? So total body dose in excess of about 50 grams, okay? So this is a massive dose in a short time for the whole body, okay? Okay, this, this is huge, this is 5,000 rats, okay? And what happens here? Damage to the central nervous system as well as all other organ systems in the body, so everything gets affected, okay? Everything is affected. Uh, bone marrow is going to be affected, the GI tract is going to be affected, and the last thing, okay, will be, you know, the 
brain and, and, and the vascularity around it. So all the hematopoietic and GI symptoms are going to be, be present at this dose level. Everything. Um, one more time. Um, Done? Okay. All right, the central nervous syndrome. The symptoms that are most commonly observed are the following. Unconsciousness within, within a few minutes. Okay, put on top. Okay, like I said, and, and make sure that you remember, okay, the hematopoietic symptoms are going to be there. Gastrointestinal syndrome uh, symptoms are going to be there. And then on top of that, you're gonna, the, the, you're gonna also observe unconsciousness within minutes, okay? Next, increase intracranial pressure. Okay, why? Because the vascularity is destroyed. The walls of the veins and vessels are destroyed, and so you, have a hemorrhage in your body, so intracranial pressure increases. Okay. Next, inflammation <laughs> in the blood Bless vessels you. of the brain, okay. meningitis, and death within hours or days. And at that point, I think it's, you hope it's hours, because otherwise the patient is just suffering for, for days. Okay, the latent period may last, may last, dose dependent, may last 12 hours, okay? So it's not even a day anymore, okay? 12 hours and then you're going to, uh, the person will go into, uh, into the manifest period, okay? Time before loss of consciousness and time before death is directly related to the magnitude of the dose. So the higher the dose, and the sooner the patient will die, okay? And the quicker he will lose consciousness. So these are really high doses. Once again, I emphasize, I did something that were, uh, is it possible to encounter this in diagnostic radiography? No. Very unlikely. Why? Because for one thing, we call it, right? <laughs> right? Collimating, <laughs> just for the body. You're not exposing the whole body, so you're collimating, and the doses that we're talking about here are just incredible doses. And that's why I always, and I have kept reminding you, what is your dose limit as an X-ray worker? Okay, it's five, five Reagan per year, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you're talking. This is not five. <laughs> so go back here. This is 50 grade. Okay, this is 5,000. 5,000 rads. Okay. Not five rads in a year. This is 5,000 rads that happen in a minute? Short period, a short of period of time. Okay, so just think about a nuclear explosion. How long does it take? It goes very quickly. It goes very quickly. So that's the time that we're talking about. It's a very quick explosion. Uh, are, is there evidence of people going into cerebrovascular syndrome? If there's, a, there's been a few accidents. Uh, uh, it is believed that those, uh, the cleaners and those that went into the Chernobyl to clean up to turn, to kind of clean up the uh, reactor, those that went in first, they think that they did went into cerebrovascular syndrome. Yeah. Uh, because there were, I think the number was, what, 32? I can't remember exactly. Uh, good number of them uh, just died within within days, and so it is believed that they did go into the cerebrovascular okay. and they went in. I mean, they were just going in in periods of you know ten minutes, and then they come out, and many of them just came out all groggy when they came out. Many of them they were just taken to the hospital, but. Okay, this, is, this was an emergency. And you, you know, this is the Soviet Union at that time. You know, and the Soviet Union was collapsing, and so it was kind of chaotic. And so pretty much they sent the people that were working in the plant and the pe people from the military. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. Seriously. How successful is the cleanup? Well, what did 
they, what, did those people have an attack? Or? Well, they, they did. They did because uh, what happened was the uh, reactor had blown up, right? And it's putting all kinds of radioactive materials into the atmosphere. At least you covered that. They were dumping concrete and they were dumping whatever they could find really at that point. Yeah, and what they did, by the way, what they did is they enclosed that reactor was enclosed again in, I don't know how many layers of concrete, but someone had to put the concrete in there. And so they were dumping it from helicopters, and, and but they also have people on the ground. Yeah. I mean, even now, I mean, from the movie we watched the other day, I mean, that whole area, Pripyat is the name of the town that was there, that whole area is, 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 is isolated. People cannot go. I mean, they let you, they let scientists go in uh, to, you know, do studies, animals, plants, you know, uh, and, but then you go out, and there are areas where they don't even let you go in. I mean, they don't let you get that close. You know, scavengers do go in, and they steal toilets and stuff like that, so, and then they sell them. I mean, it's, so yeah, no, they, 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 they do. They still. Again, this is the old Soviet Union, right? I mean, they're still in whatever they can find, desks and boards, whatever they can find, doors, and, and they, you know, they take them out and sell them. But toilets is common. You, know, you find a bunch of houses with no toilets. They, they fill toilets and sell them. Yeah. At that kind of level of radiation, would any amount or thickness of lead shielding help at all? Oh, you don't want lead shielding. Not in a case like that. Lead shielding is not a good thing. Lead shield is good for gamma and for x-rays. Any other type of radiation, you want to avoid uh, lead shielding. Say better radiation, you don't want lead shielding. Because what happens is then you activate, just like what you do with uh, with your body, okay? What happens, say, what what say what happens to your body with photoelectric interaction, right? Uh, the, the photon hits the electron, Right, and then that electron is ejected, right? It goes someplace, it's absorbed by another atom. But the problem is, with lead, at high energies, you activate the K-shell electrons of lead. And then they also start being removed, okay? And then you, you create X-rays, you get gamma radiation from that electron being ejected, because another electron from the outer shells will take its place, right? And those are powerful X-rays. I mean, what is the atomic number of lead? PV? FD? Uh, 82, yeah. So it is a pretty high uh, atomic number. So the binding energy of the K shell is pretty high. You remove that electron, which is what happens with beta radiation. And then you create, you, you end up being exposed even more. Yep. Lead, is, is, lead is good for gamma and for x-rays, but, but not for other types of radiation. And that was also part of the problem, that many of the guys who went in to do the cleanup, they gave them lead. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if they knew or if they just, just to make people feel better. There is a lead shield. Is there anything that works against that stuff? I have yeah. Plastic. plastic. Believe it or not, plastic. Really? <laughs> plastic also. with the cardboard works really well. It's, yeah. And the, the, the thing is that you want to slow it down. That's, that's the, yeah, that's what they use. Uh, how, how thick would this plastic and cardboard be to protect you from this sort it of thing? Depends on the energy. Uh, bomb anatomically uh, come from the high LET or low LET? Both. Both. And there were, see, that was another thing. We'll talk about it later, but just to give you a hint. There were two different bombs. They were not the same. Uh, one was a hydrogen bomb, and it spewed mostly uh, gamma radiation. Okay? 
that was Hiroshima. Nagasaki was uh, more of a uh, an atomic bomb. Okay, and then you had lots of other uh, reactive materials coming up besides gamma radiation, but there were other stuff coming up. Okay. It was more destructive. A lot more destructive. More powerful. All right. Okay, let's take a break. Oh, I mean, we're done. <laughs> <laughs>